April 18, 2007, three Christians are bound to their chairs, tortured, and stabbed repeatedly at a Bible print shop in Malatya. Their throats are slit. One year later, widow Suzanne Geske told CBN News, the anniversary of her husband's murder is just another day of remembrance. You see, every day is April <laughs> You Every day have to live without him. Five suspects went on trial for killing the men. Five years later, there is still no conviction. Church attendance dropped immediately after the Malachi incident. It's growing once again, but so are the number of incidents against Christians. The Protestant churches of Turkey documented 12 attacks against Christians in 2011. This included the beating of Christians for sharing their faith with Muslims. No one's been prosecuted for any of those crimes. That's led the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom for the first time to list Turkey as a country of particular concern. People Nina Shea, one of the commissioners supporting that move, says the Turkish government is suppressing Christian worship. As a result, Christian numbers are dwindling. They comprise 0.15% of the entire population of Turkey. So they are very frail, and we're going to see them vanish in our lifetime if Turkey doesn't lift its dense web of regulations and give them religious freedom. Turkey's ambassador in Washington calls the CPC designation politically motivated. Christians say it's because the Turkish government won't act against growing intolerance against non-Muslims. Middle East analyst Walid Faris is not surprised. He says Prime Minister Erdogan is Islamizing the society by shifting away from a pro-NATO, pro-Western position. To a pro-Islamist, uh, more anti-Israel and slightly anti-Western attitude, for example, the alliance with Hamas. That alliance cooled relations with Israel, leading to a shootout over a flotilla of terrorists bound for Gaza. Turkey also supported anti-Gaddafi rebels in Libya, and more recently, opposition fighters in Syria. The nation is positioning itself as a dominant Middle Eastern power. As Turkey reasserts itself playing a leading role in helping to shape the future of North Africa and the Middle East, like most Americans, Turks have one thing on their minds, the economy. 25% of Turks between the ages of 18 and 24 are unemployed. All the attention on Israel and Syria is affecting the Turkish economy. That's one reason there are not as many jobs as before. Turkey must first solve its internal problems, then it can focus on Israel and Syria. While most Turks enjoy a more open, secular society, the shift toward Islamic fundamentalism may not come as a surprise. Their nation has a long history of embracing Western culture and then eventually rejecting it. For example, Istanbul's Hagia Sophia. For a thousand years, it stood as the largest cathedral in the world. After Ottoman Muslims conquered the city in 1453, they converted the basilica into a mosque, plastering over 12th century Byzantine mosaics like this one of Jesus. The Ottoman Turks established a caliphate to rule over the Islamic world. In the 1920s, Mustafa Ataturk established a secular state. Nearly 100 years later, it seems Turkey again is distancing itself from the West. Erdogan is taking steps to reestablish the Turkish caliphate. There will be a renewed caliphate, but there will be a struggle over who's going to control that caliphate. And again, we go back to centuries in time. Would it be the Arab caliphate or the Ottoman caliphate? So we'll go back to square one. In the meantime, Turkish Christians pray for greater religious freedom and tolerance, as young Turks like Mohammed and Suleiman continue their search for a brighter future. We need jobs and peace. We need a solution to our problems. Gary Lane, CBN News, Istanbul.